Yoda. Hear you, I do. Who are you? My imagination, it must be. No. It is I, Qui-Gon Jinn. That cannot be. Dead you are. No. I am part of the living force, Yoda. It is well known that Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn was the first of the Jedi to learn the ability of transcending his consciousness into the next realm, becoming a Force Ghost. As no other Jedi had learned of this power before, he was the first to pass down his knowledge after his death through connecting with Master Yoda during his intense meditation rituals. Yoda then passed the knowledge down to Obi-Wan Kenobi as we saw in the end of Revenge of the Sith, thus allowing Obi-Wan and Yoda to vanish upon their deaths. Obi-Wan with Vader in Episode 4, and Yoda in Return of the Jedi in his hut on Dagobah. How, where, and who did Qui-Gon Jinn learn this ability to transcend himself after the physical world as a Force Ghost? And how did Anakin show up as a Force Ghost at the end of Return of the Jedi with his other two masters? There are two questions here, one which shall be addressed in this episode, and the other we'll leave that for another time. During Qui-Gon's lineage, before his physical death by Darth Maul, he traveled to an ancient place to see the Shaman of the Wills. One of the shamans was known to have discovered the secret of eternal consciousness and, later, Qui-Gon Jinn learned the secret, allowing him to interact with the living after his death. We can trace the early drafts of Episode 4 A New Hope, where George Lucas stated was originally an old story told in the Journal of the Wills. What's the Journal of the Wills? Well, it's where he had thought Star Wars should be read by these highly intelligent immortal beings known as the Wills, who essentially were the Force itself. He later abolished this theory and thought it would be more understandable if he just called them the Force and creating a side story to pay homage to them through Qui-Gon's travels and ability to become a Force Ghost. They were a record of galactic knowledge. The Shaman of the Wills were first specifically mentioned in the screenplay of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, in a now deleted scene that features the spirit of Qui-Gon Jinn communicating with Yoda. In the scene, which was never filmed, Jinn stated the eternal consciousness that had been accomplished by a Shaman of the Wills is a cut line from a later scene which also had Yoda saying that the path to eternal consciousness was a secret of the Ancient Order of the Wills. We can also see in the Clone Wars that the final three episodes titled Voices, Destiny, and Sacrifice expanded on how Jin learned the secret to eternal consciousness and how he passed that knowledge onto Yoda. In the episode, Yoda learned about the secret from the five Force priestesses who had also trained Jin. What is confusing, however, is that Qui-Gon did learn from the Shaman of the Wills. However, later, the story was changed to the priestesses and him not having finished his training, which is the result of him only appearing as a premonition or a voice and not as a manifestation of his old body. But no mention is made of a Shaman of the Wills. Regardless of his deleted entry, StarWars.com still officially claims Master Qui-Gon learning his ability from the ancient Shaman of the Wills. So, this is very much canon. In my opinion, what I believe happened here is that the Shaman of the Wills were now changed to the priestesses in order to give a more cartoony and understandable effect. However, the original script made by George Lucas before Episode 4, A New Hope, was distinctly written as the Shaman of the Wills. So it is my belief that these are two of the same entities, just with different names. Here is an official quote from Qui-Gon in a dialogue between himself and Master Yoda upon his learnings in becoming a Force Ghost. The ability to defy oblivion can be achieved, but only for oneself. It was accomplished by a shaman of the wills. It is a state acquired through compassion, not greed, which I mentioned above in the first part of this video. I find this very interesting as it shows the connection between the Force and Lucas's ability to create a person in homage of this theory. So beyond the father, beyond the son, and beyond Abeloth, which was the mother, the shaman of the wills were indeed the most powerful beings in all of Star Wars. No one knows exactly what the shaman looks like, only that he and his collective are the keepers of the galaxy's events, like an almost narrator. Being compared to the Force itself by Lucas gives concrete evidence to establish that they were in fact the most powerful entity in the Star Wars galaxy, achieving the status of a god. I will add, however, that in Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, illustrated screenplay and the art of Star Wars Episode 3, both have Qui-Gon Jinn stating that he knew of only one shaman who had achieved immortality. However, 
Qui-Gon also states in the Revenge of the Sith novelization that immortality is a possible end result for working with the Will's teachings. In the next episode of Star Wars Theory, we will discuss one of Yoda's missions that was more interesting than his others. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I wish you all a fantastic day or night filled with happiness and health wherever you are in the galaxy watching this. Think deep and judge well, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, and as always, may the Force be with you.